One of my customers uh, was cut off before he could quite complete this uh, very sweet little project. It's a cradle for uh, the generations passed on. He's going to have a little book. He's going to have uh, a record of who used it, who passed it, from being a baby to their children, to their children. I think it's a wonderful piece of work. It was left with some repairs, and he asked me, since he can't come in, we can't allow him to come in, to complete it for him and uh, give him a curbside pickup. These two holes right here. Uh, are, we're mistaken. Uh, the domino machine was turned the wrong direction. They're going to show. I searched these two pieces and found a section right, right along here, here or here, that uh, is a pretty good match. So what I do next is uh, step them, um, cut out a chunk of this, and I'm going to reduce in size that will cover the whole range from here to here. The bandsaw is the right tool for cutting something small like this. It's pretty dangerous to cut with a table saw. Plus, the green's on an angle. Running at a slight angle here. It's not running at an angle out there. I want to be coming up straight, same direction that grain is running. So I'm going to cut along the, roughly along the grain at its angle first to get a piece out that uh, is more perfectly matched. That looks best uh, right there. I'm going to straighten this edge. Uh, Ben's always not that good at cutting a straight line. Could do better, but I can't do freehand to get an angle. So that is going to be done with that machine way over there called the disc sander. This looks like the, the best match in the lot. There are some places where the grain did turn sideways. So I'm going to mark it with a little extra length. I'm going to give it this much extra because I want to shape the end so it tends to look like a change in grain direction. And uh, we want to get rid of this butt shape, butt joint, because they show up as something artificial. This is good. But we want to make sure that I've got enough length on here to give it something of a disguise. Now I'm going to take this uh, piece and I'm going to tack it down with hot melt glue temporarily so that I will be able to hold it in place easily while I incise around it with a brand new razor knife. Now, now it's stuck down I'm going to knife very carefully very lightly with a, a brand new sharp razor blade in my razor knife and I'm cutting right through some hot melt that squalls out. First pass, very light touch or you're going to be drawn sideways by any angles in the grain. And you'll have that to repair. Now, I'm not going super deep now. I'm not going very hard. A lot of passes is what it takes to get a clear mark that doesn't actually widen the opening very much. It does a little because of the thickness. And once I've got a good enough mark, I will deepen it. Okay, I've got it clamped down now. That's because this definitely takes two hands. I've got to deepen these a little bit more. Now I've got good guidance from having got, um, cut the initial cut. With, uh, with the stick itself. But now I'm deepening it and I'm, what you find is there's too much friction on the side of the blade. Now, you can very carefully 
very slowly you cut a little v-line that takes the chip out. Now that reduces the friction and I can go to another level. This is a router. This part right here is a router bit. It's the cutting action it happens here. This is the collet of the router. This part with the nut and, another, and a couple of wrenches you clamp this collet down on the bit to hold it in place with a little cone shaped interior part that uh, squeezes it hard and holds it in place. You get a large variety of router bits. This one is just a flat bottom cut, vertical sides, and it'll make a little groove. Uh, that's what we need to clean out the interior of the uh, repair. This is just the motor part of the router. It has a base, which is how you set the uh, the which is how you set the the depth and give you something to guide it. So the base slides on, and this particular router it just clips in place here. Routers vary, and how they work varies. Each model is different, but that's how this one works. And then, if I turn this, you'll see the router bit, the base moving, and the router bit cutting deeper. So that's the adjustment you make for depth. And I'll set this where I want it, about the right amount for making a sound repair. And then I lock it down right here. And it's ready to run. It will ride on this surface cutting out the bottom to clean that roof out. This is an example of another router bit that is a different shape. This one has a bearing on the top that doesn't cut anything. It spins easily. It's a little ball bearing. And that just guides the bit as it travels the length of this piece of wood and it will produce that rounded over shape. It's called a round over bit. You can get multiple profiles, all different kinds of shapes for edge shaping. And beyond that you can get bits that cut in the middle and make a shaped groove. Oh, now, I'm going to drop that router bit into one of those slots. So it's hanging down inside there. And then I'm going to run it around the opening, watching very carefully not to cut into the edge, beyond that edge. I only need to go close to it because the rest of it will just fall loose since I made a deep side cut. And you can see them here. Okay, you can see that I've got it hollowed out now with a flat bottom. And I couldn't quite go all the way to the edge because I'm too likely to cut into it accidentally, but I did it. The router worked fine. I did have to put a little tiny bit in there to fit in there. So the last thing to prepare this involves perching a chisel on between what remains and that original knife cut and just cutting downward with the chisel and it generally just falls the part, the remainder, right off. Okay, let's try the fit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now I'll have some follow-up to do to disguise the lines. That'll be done with a uh, filler, pigmented fillers. So epoxy is what's called for for this particular glue operation because it does not shrink. It is two compounds that combine. One is a catalyst that hardens the other. Or in 
So they, uh, nothing evaporates. They just combine with one another. Now if I were to use ordinary yellow glue here, there are going to be spots where it's, because the bottom isn't perfectly even, there are, will be voids between the bottom of my piece and that. And uh, they would probably not remain filled because it shrinks. Next I'm going to have to mix up a filler to match uh, the darker areas and the lighter areas, one each, uh, to uh, disguise what you see there. So I'm judging from this that we got too much yellow and we need to balance that and uh, that means move it a little toward red. That would be this dark stuff which you have to be very careful with. It's also going to make it too dark which means we will need to add some white. The light color turned out pretty good. Once it dried, it was really hard to see. It is monochromatic though, and that is a little misleading. You can't get it to look exactly like wood until you do more to it. And that's where the light, the dark colored stuff comes in. Right there. That little spot. I think I'm going to call it and say we got it. Now I'm going to be doing some V-shaped knife cuts. Sort of change the grain direction to be a little more variable. Again, I'm using a sharp razor knife. I'm just slicing at a diagonal and meeting that slice from the other side. So we have something to put filler in that will endure. And uh, so we've got lines here that are straight. What my intention is, is to make this look like just very slightly aberrant grain. All right, break this up with some more of the flakes. One, two, three, four, one, slightly offset, right, two, slightly offset, right across the grain line, just like the others. All right, now I'm going to fill the whole thing with the darker and sand it, let it dry and sand it, and uh, see if we need to use some of the white to break up even that filler. And so that's it. I'd say that we're going to pass that one. One of the things we have to do is finish making this pin right here that has the, uh, it's going to have a brass dowel in it. It's designed to go in through this hole right here and pin this so it doesn't swing in case the baby gets a little too wild. So I'm going to drill through it first. I've got it all ready right down to measurement, made sure it's sitting position center. I've drilled it to index that hole. And this goes in to hold it in that location. Next step, we're going to round over, same router, remember that bit? We're going to round over the end supports that hold up the cradle itself. It's going to get loud.
Good. All done and ready for a curbside pickup.